Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sean with Emerald Coast Digitizing. I digitize home movies here in Pensacola, Florida. If you need someone to do this for you, give me a shout. You can check out my website, EmeraldCoastDigitizing.com. I said three customer calls in a row. Ugh. Now my GoPro battery is about to die. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy started. And then I can go back over to that tape. And this is an eight millimeter. So what I do on the Kodak reels, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to use this machine. You're going to put it in capture, you're going to go ahead and go into capture, and you're going to feed it through just like this. If the, if the leader is not straight, you're going to want to cut the end of the leader off so it's straight. So once you got it through there, you're going to pull through all the way to the first frame, and you're going to take a look at it, and it looks pretty good. So now we can start our capture. And right now it's looking a little off. So we need to work on it. Here it goes there. So we'll stop it, close, and then we'll start it again. It's clean. Then we come over to take up reel. And while it's capturing, we can do this. You just hold it, and then you get it right around this point. Grab it, loop it around, and then boom, we're going. I actually don't like this, so I'm gonna start it over because of the sprocket holes. And we can go in, we go to frame adjust, and we can go to the left a little bit. We could probably zoom in just a bit. I think that looks pretty clean. And I'll back it up to the beginning. Fairly easy to do. And then we can start it at the very beginning. And there's that broken sprocket hole again. going pretty clean so this is a pretty long reel that'll probably take an hour or so hour and a half so we'll let that go we're gonna finish our tape oh we got this one going we might as well get this one going too the film is like the only thing that I label afterwards Like it's more to it than the tape. It's like you can rehouse them and everything, and sometimes they just don't do what you want them to do. Zero two five seventeen ninety three. NASCAR 5093. What is this? 57 five, 57293. And then we got 52893. Get that started. Everything's squeaking today. Go in the capture. I don't like doing just the straight eight millimeter stuff. I prefer doing the super eight because I have to do my rewinding through the Kodak Reels machine because I haven't set myself up for six because I don't have a, a projector that'll do the rewinding. But there's no leader, but that's not going to be a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to. Get rid of this end piece here. We're gonna send it through our gate, and then we're gonna get it right there. We're gonna close it, see our film, 
and we will start record. We'll feed it just a little until it grabs it. And there it goes. So I don't have to put a leader on this to to copy it. That's another great thing about the Kodak Reels machines. If you know what you're doing, you can bypass having to put a leader on, and you get still get the very beginning of the film. And I'll just stick around and wait for a second, and then I'll spool it up into the uh, the take up reel. Once it's time. I really, like, I just don't mind these machines. Like, yeah, they take longer. And if I wanted to sit down, if I wanted to sit down and do all this, if I had like a different projector set up and a different transferring set up, I'd have to sit down and focus on all these for a couple hours, right? And just focus only on the film, which in some ways can be better but I think it's worse because once I set these three up I can kind of just walk away from it and work on other projects and it'll still get done and it comes out pretty clean I really like the way it comes out on these machines and it's very easy on fragile old film there's just a lot of workflow advantages and I just can't bring myself to find the value of getting a different transfer device because not only is it working fine, if one goes down, if I go out and buy like a $6,000 projector Elmo transfer device, then if it goes down and stops working, then that's it. I can't, I mean, you really need to have two or three of them to do the job right and to stay consistent. So I just, I mean, with three of these here, if one breaks, then I can just keep keep chugging along and still get the job done, you know? But if I had like an, like an Elmo trans video or if I had like a telecine set up, I mean, I would only be able to afford the invest, to invest in one of them because I don't get enough film through here to to spend, you know, 16 grand or, or, you know, five, six grand on two machines. I just don't have, I mean, it doesn't make any sense financially. So we'll send this through. So having a redundancy of having having the redundancies of having three of these, it all it allows me like to never have to stop doing it. But it also allows me to do it fairly quickly too because I can get three so I can get ten minutes of footage done in thirty minutes. So it's not bad. Well, that's coming out great. That was great. And now I can step away. Just keep an eye on it. As long as you hear it, you can hear if something's going wrong. So it's nice to do it in the background. If that was all I was doing, I would do a different machine. Well, that's it for the day. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you. Like and subscribe. Check out all these other videos and these playlists here if you enjoy this content. Um, see you in the next video. Thanks so much.